Okay, so let's get right into how we find the price, the futures price of a specific asset. And we're going to do three cases. Uh, case number one, as you can see up here, is no income. So the underlying asset will produce no income. This will be the base case. This will be the easiest one to, to figure out a price for. And we'll use an arbitrage argument to prove uh, what the price should be. So let's take an asset, uh, and it's an investment asset, number one, and it produces no income. And let's say that we observe right now in the spot market the price of $40. And we say, well, what would be the futures price today? If this is $40 today, what would be a futures price for a three-month contract? Let's say we are looking at uh, uh, three months from now. Uh, and we want to know what the futures price today is. And our risk-free rate is 5%. And, of course, this is with continuous compounding. <clears throat> so let's set up a couple of arguments here first. Let's go through this. And uh, we're setting up an arbitrage argument. So with arbitrage, we should be able to borrow something uh, on one side and buy something on another. Uh, we don't want to use any of our own money. We want to be able to bring together a deal such that there will be a riskless profit once we structure the deal. So we're not digging into our own pocket and putting out money to do anything. We don't want to do any of that. We just want to observe the environment and say, you know, if I took money from that person and did this, and then I did this over here and put them together, everyone would be happy, and I'd walk away with free money. That's arbitrage. So let's see if we can do that. So, first of all, we can borrow $40 at the risk-free rate for three months. Remember, we don't want to use our own money. We want to make sure that we can structure a deal without ourselves getting involved. So, we're going to borrow $40, and we're going to buy the underlying asset for $40. Bucks. Well, in three months, if we did that, if we did that, in three months, since this is continuous compounding, we would owe 40 and then it's e to the power of rt. Here is our t, 0.25. This is our t here. And here is our r over here. Uh, would be $40.50 in three months. So in three months, we would owe, on this loan, $40.50. So if, if the futures price today is greater than this $40.50, then we would go ahead and buy the asset and short one futures contract at whatever price F0 is. Now, I'm going to give you the easiest way to keep the structure of the arbitrage deal clear in your head as to, well, am I buying the underlying asset or am I selling it? Am I shorting the futures? What am I doing? Because that can cause confusion sometimes. Let me give you the easiest way to remember this, and you feel free to share this with your friends. Buy low, sell high. And you probably think, oh, come on, my dad used to say that. Buy low, sell high. That is the secret of knowing how to do everything. So let's look back at this again. If the futures price is greater than the future price of the spot. No, I shouldn't say the future price of the spot. Let me let me clear that up. Then the future value of the loan required to buy the spot asset today. Uh, we're going to buy the spot and sell F0. So when we look at this inequality, which side is the high side, which side is the low side? Well, if we're saying that F0 is greater than 4050, this is considered our high side and this is considered our low side, right? This is lower than this. Well, what we want to do is buy low, so we're buying S0, and sell high, so we're selling F0. See that? Buy low, sell high. That's all you have to remember. Well, let's go the other way. So we can see that if the futures price is greater than 4050, arbitragers will step in and engage in that. The selling of the futures contract of the futures price will start to push the price of that down. The buying of the spot asset will start to push the price of that up so that this arbitrage opportunity disappears. So we know that we can bound it on the upside. Well, what about the downside? 
Well, let's do the opposite way. Instead of buying the asset, let's sell it. And this is, this is how we develop an arbitrage, arbitrage proof, is we buy an asset and see what happens, then we sell it and see what happens. So, let's sell it for 40 bucks. We can then take that $40 because we didn't own the asset. We've shorted the asset. We sold it for 40 bucks. We can invest that asset at the risk-free rate for three months, and $40 will grow to $40.25, the same amount as the loan. And remember, one of the assumptions we made is that we can borrow and, and lend at the risk-free rate. So we'll have $40.25 in three months. <clears throat> so... If the futures price is less than this $40.50, so before we look at, 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 at what we do over here, let's see if we can figure out what we do just by our high-low argument. What is the high side? What is the low side? Well, if 40.50 is greater than F0, this must be the low side. This must be the high side. So since this is high, what we want to do, we want to buy low, sell high. So we would buy a futures contract and we would short the short uh, the asset and here it is right here sell the spot buy f naught so <clears throat> if the futures price is below what our money can grow to uh, then there is an arbitrage opportunity well the selling of the spot asset would tend to push that price down and the buying of the futures contract would tend to push that price up until it disappeared so we can see that if the futures price is priced above $40.50, forces come into play to push it back down towards $40.50. If it's priced below, forces come into play to push it back up to $40.50. So, the arbitrage argument holds in such a case that the futures price must be $40.50, or in and around that neighborhood, give or take a few pennies either way, of $40.50, so that there could be no opportunity to do either of these two uh, strategies. So let's give an example here, give it some color. Let's say the futures price is $43 and the spot price is $40 today. So we're gonna borrow 40 bucks at 5% for three months and we're gonna buy this, the asset. And we're going to short one futures contract. We're gonna sell at F0, we're gonna short one futures contract at 43 uh, for a three month contract. In three months, we will deliver the asset because we're, we're short. When we're short a futures contract, that means we're delivering the asset. We'll deliver the asset, which we already own. We borrowed the money to buy it. We'll receive $43 because that's the contract price. Once we enter into that contract, we are obligated. And it, it might be worth mentioning at this point that when we're talking about futures, and forwards, both parties are obligated. Both parties are obligated to perform. It's not a choice. Both are obligated to perform. Once you enter this contract for 43, you are obligated to deliver it for 43. Somebody else is obligated to pay 43. You bought it at 40 because you borrowed money. Your loan will grow to $40.50. You'll deliver the asset for 43. There you go. There's a riskless profit in there because you borrowed somebody else's money. You're going to pay them back. You entered into a contract to force somebody else to buy it from you for more than what it cost you to carry that loan. Notice I said the word carry. To carry that loan for three months. So you're already going to start to, I'm going to start to introduce to you shortly the term, the cost of carry. That's what it costs to carry the asset forward for three months, but we'll get more. Well, what if it were 39? Well, then let's uh, short the asset at $40. We got $40 cash. We'll invest the $40 for 5% for three months. So you don't want to sit on cash. Let's invest it. It'll grow to $40.50. We will buy the futures contract. Remember, we're buying low. We will buy a futures contract with a, with a delivery price of $39, which expires in three months. So in three months, because we bought it at 39 Somebody is obligated to deliver to us the asset at $39, and we are obligated to pay for that asset. But look, we're already short. Uh, we're short the asset anyway, so we got to buy to cover anyway. So this is our buy to cover. We have we already we're, we're we're putting our buy to cover in now. 
Well, our money grows to $40.50 in three months. So in three months, we'll take delivery of the asset. We'll use that to cover out our, to, to close our short position. We got to pay 39 bucks, but our $40 investment will grow to 40 50 The rest is ours. So because that this free money exists, it will be taken advantage of. So we have ability. There are players who are able to take advantage of this. And because it is free money, uh, there is a willingness. We cannot see why there wouldn't be a willingness to do this. There is a willingness to do this, hence it proves itself. And let's look at the next screen to see what conclusions we can draw from an investment asset that pays no income. Remember now, that'll be our base case. From that, we will add complexity. So we're now in a position to make some uh, general statements or some key statements. The first one that we can make is our no arbitrage price, which means the futures price today should be equal to the spot price of the underlying asset continuously compounded at the risk-free rate for a period of time covered by the futures contract. A three-month futures contract, then we need to carry it for three months. Six months, then six months. When it's equal or roughly very close to equal, it'll never be exactly equal. In, in reality, you'll be off a little bit, and we'll explain why later on, but it'll be off by pennies. We call that equality. Uh, then there is no opportunity for arbitrage. Now this is our, remember this was our investment asset that pays no income. So another statement that we can make is that the futures price will always be greater than the price of the spot asset. The futures price will always be above the spot price in the market on the day that we're calculating the futures price. Why? Because continuously compounded is greater than zero. E to the uh, RT, if we just calculate this separately, E to the RT is greater than zero. That means our cost of carry is greater than zero. Whether we borrow money, the loan will grow, or if we short the stock and invest the money, the investment will grow. Whether we're uh, uh, borrowing money and having a loan grow or investing money and having that grow, the cost of carry will be greater than zero. So since it's F0 equals S0 E to the RT, F0, if we eliminate E to the RT, the futures price will always be above the spot price. That is true for any investment asset. It is not necessarily true for a consumption asset. But for an investment asset, these two statements hold. Now, when we get to consumption assets, we'll find that these statements require some work, a little bit of reworking because the logic, the, the arbitrage argument differs. But as long as you know or can remember that these two statements, these key statements, belong to investment assets with no income. So just to repeat what our uh, conclusions were, if the futures price is above the spot price, the price of the, the asset, times the cost of carry, uh, what are we going to do? Remember, we buy high and sell low. If the futures price is higher than the spot price, that means this is the high side, this is the low side. We're going to buy low, so we'll borrow at the risk-free rate for T to buy the asset, and we'll sell a futures contract. And our profit, as we've seen in the previous screen, is the futures price minus the spot price carried for the entire term at whatever the risk-free rate is. So the last uh, uh, screen we did, we used an example of $43 for the futures price. And our asset at $40 carried to the end of the term ended up being $40.50 for a profit of $250. If the futures price is less than the asset carried to the end of the term, uh, what's, what's our uh, side here? Well, this is the less than side, so this is the low side, this is the high side. So we know what we're doing, right? If this is the high side, we're shorting it. We're going to sell S0, invest at the risk-free rate for the, the period T, and we're going to go long one futures contract so that we can buy the underlying asset at F0. Once we enter this contract, we buy at that price. 
So in our previous example, uh, F0 was uh, 39, but our, our asset carried to the end of the term resulted in a, a, uh, uh, an amount of $40.50. That was our investment. We were short the asset for a profit of 150. Well, what if you can't short? Notice uh, here uh, in this, uh, in this uh, second scenario for this arbitrage argument, we're shorting the asset. Well, what if you can't short it? What if it's something that, that, that you simply can't short? How do you deal with that? For instance, the S&P 500 index. <clears throat> well, you can't short that. That's very difficult to short because you would have to short uh, fractional shares. Uh, so how would, we, how would we short the underlying asset if there's an arbitrage opportunity at the index level? Well, as it turns out, it's not really a problem. Because remember, our assumption said that there are large uh, uh, players that are both willing and able to take advantage of arbitrage opportunities. So all we have to do is recognize that, you know what, there are current holders out there of investment assets. There are already current holders out there of investment assets. So if the investment itself pays no income and there is an arbitrage opportunity, uh, it still holds. This one still holds. Why? Because let's say that I'm currently holding the asset and I sell it. Well, I no longer own it, but I really would want to own it. But I no longer own it. That's okay. I am buying the futures contract, so I'm going to get it back at 39, but I sold it at 40. I'm going to make an extra buck 50, and I'm not going to lose the upside potential of the asset because I get to buy it back at 39 anyway. Sold it at 40, buy it back at 39. My 40 bucks will grow to, uh, 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 to, to 40, 50, and I'm good. So the arbitrage argument still holds. Even in the case where you cannot short, all we have to do is just imagine and just see out there that there's a lot of large funds and a lot of large investment banks that are probably holding those investment assets anyways so they would be the sellers. We don't necessarily need short sellers if you already have long positions that can be sellers. And remember going forward, buy low, sell high. Just remember that and you'll never get confused about, well, if the futures price is above the spot price, hang on now, what am I doing? Am I buying? Am I selling? And you're trying to work it all the way through to see what you're going to do. Just remember, buy low, sell high. And, and it's that easy. Let's move on.